Last year, my energy bill was about £2,000. This year, I'm on track for a £6,000 debt. So like lots of people, I'm looking at my bills and I'm not just thinking, this has gone up a bit. <laughs> I'm thinking, I can't pay this. And if this is happening to you for the first time, it's scary. You're thinking, can I afford the energy I need? But for hundreds of millions of people worldwide, access to affordable and reliable energy hasn't happened at all. And here in the UK, this is still the experience of many of the four and a half million people who have to pay in advance for the energy they need using a prepayment meter. So like putting coins in an old-fashioned payphone, when you run out of credit, you get cut off, like this. <laughs> the organization I work for supports people who can't support the energy they need. So let me give you an idea of what living on a low income with a prepayment meter can be like. Paul lives with his partner and two kids in a flat here in London. Because they've got a prepayment meter, they have to pay more for every unit of energy than if they had a regular meter. Paul's diabetic and keeps insulin in the fridge. So if they have a power cut, they don't just lose the food in the fridge, but Paul's medicine. So sometimes, they turn off the heating to keep the fridge on. Sometimes they turn the lights off and use candles. Sometimes the kids have bread for breakfast rather than toast. And with the heating off, the flat gets damp and the black mold in the kitchen gets worse and the kids' asthma gets worse. For them, the threat of a power cut is not a maybe, but a daily reality. So if we think everything's been okay until the energy crisis of 2022, the lights have stayed on. That hasn't been true for everyone. And now it's not gonna be true for many more people because with the surge in oil and gas prices, this winter, everyone in the UK can expect to pay twice, double, what they paid for their energy last year. And the big mystery about this energy crisis is that we already have technical solutions that can completely transform how much energy we need, where it comes from, and what it costs. Right now, today. Renewable energy sources keep getting cheaper. And unlike the gas that we bring in from other countries, once you build this stuff, no one can shut it down because no one can stop the wind from blowing or the sun from shining. And when you combine renewables with energy efficiency, you can have a home that is warm in winter, cool in summer, almost without a utility bill. So it should be a no-brainer. We should be building this stuff as quick as we can. But we're not. And I've been wondering why. The existence of prepayment meters tells us something about the values that underpin our energy system. In the UK, it is illegal to cut off somebody's water supply. But if you can't pay for your gas or electricity, then you can be cut off. So unlike water, energy is not seen as a basic human need, but as a commodity like nice shoes or a fancy car, something that you can choose to buy or not. 
And so if you can't afford the energy that you need, it's not because the system has failed. It's because you failed. But what if we took a step back and said, energy is a basic human need. And everyone should be able to access adequate and affordable energy. Because everyone should be able to access adequate and affordable energy. Well, then we would take different decisions about how the system is run and what infrastructure gets built. But energy is one of those things that for most people, we don't think about it that much. It's always there in the background, kind of invisible, until, like now, there's a problem, and it's not. And the people who design and deliver our energy system are energy people, not us. So as I see it, our energy problem has three parts. Firstly, the system doesn't see pools lights going out as a problem. Secondly, the system is not building the infrastructure that we need. And thirdly, we don't see that we have the power to change that. So our challenge is to rewrite the rules of our energy system and to make our power visible. Where do we start? Well, let's start where a group of community leaders started in 2013 in Brixton, South London. They wanted to take control of their own energy supply by putting solar panels on the roof of some flats. But rather than ask the council to do it, they wanted to do it themselves, together, as a community, and to share the benefits with everyone. So that's what they did. They negotiated leases for the roof space, and they raised the money through a share offer, which means the panels are jointly owned by local investors. And they created a community fund, so all the profits go there, and the community get to decide how it gets spent. In this model, in this community energy model, everyone can be part of building a sustainable future. Whether you're a homeowner or a renter, whether you live in a house or a flat, everyone can be part of this. And this is what it can look like. This was a really big win for the young people that helped install those solar panels and for all of us. But there was a but. Because of the way the rules of our energy system have been written for big power stations, the residents weren't allowed to use the electricity being generated above their heads. And instead, the majority was getting sold to the grid to big power companies. And as well as being annoying, this was unfair. Because if you live in a house with solar panels on the roof, then your bills will go down. When I joined Repowering London in 2016, part of my job was to try and find a way of feeding not just the profits back to the community, but the electricity. That's what we've been working on. And now, with our partners, Energy Local and Oxpus Energy, we're testing a model which means that anyone who lives on the estate can use that solar electricity and that they can decide how much it costs. So right now, they are paying 6p for their solar electricity and 35p for the grid electricity. I don't have enough fingers to show you 35p. When was the last time you got to decide how much your electricity costs? Never. And it gets better, because with this model, any solar energy that isn't used by one person automatically gets shared with somebody else. In the national market model, that energy would have to be sold to the highest bidder. But when you own the infrastructure and set the rules, you can decide to share. And if Paul and his family lived here, then this model would help them to keep the lights on. Now, I know we need more than solar panels. 
especially in the UK. We need to massively scale up energy efficiency and low carbon heat. But this example is just to show what's possible when we change ownership rather than technology. And when we come together and use our values to set different priorities. So hopefully you're thinking, this sounds great. Why isn't it happening everywhere? Well, I'll be honest, it's hard. Anyone trying to change the energy system is swimming against a strong tide and it carries you backwards. <laughs> Bringing people together can be tough. It takes time and you'll probably need help designing and funding the solutions that are going to be right for your community. But can it be a solution for everyone? Yes. We need to change the rules to make it easier for everyone to be part of this and to get the benefits that make it worthwhile. Right now, less than 1% of the renewable energy infrastructure in the UK is community-owned. Let's make that 20%. And let's make it easy for any community to share their energy with their neighbours or local businesses. If we change the system in this way, it will do way more than change our bills. It will mean that everyone can be a co-owner of their own power station. And it would mean an extra three billion pounds coming back into our communities every year. So the solution to the energy crisis and even the climate crisis isn't just more renewable power. It isn't more nuclear power. It is more people power. It's about you. It's about changing who controls the infrastructure, whose voices are heard, and prioritizing our collective wisdom over the short-term profits of a minority. It's about making our power visible and making sure that everyone including Paul, stays connected. All of you here today can be part of this, either by joining a community energy project or starting one, because that's how everything starts. That's how Brixton started. It's not just about putting in time or money, but making connections and sharing opportunities. It's thinking, does my employer have buildings that we could put solar panels on the roof? It's thinking, where does our school buy their energy from? There's facilitators like Repowering London across the country who can help and want to hear from you. Our energy system literally connects us. But in its current form, it also divides us because of the unequal ways in which we can or can't access it. But it doesn't have to be that way. The energy and climate crises can feel overwhelming. They are overwhelming. And one of the most reassuring things that I've found is just to do something with other people to take action together and not feel alone, because you're not alone. When you can see power, then you can take power. And I hope that our time together today helps you to do that. Thank you. <laughs>